Hello, welcome back to today's discussion of metals in biology. In the last class, we were discussing calcium modulating protein, right? CAM, right? Calcium binding protein that means calmodulin. This calmodulin, the calcium modulated protein, has 149 amino acid monomer and this is expressed in almost every eukaryotic cells and up to 1 percent of total protein mass binds 4 calcium ions that is quite a lot. So, protein mass we have 1 percent of it up to 1 percent of it is bound with calcium and this calcium binding gives rise to the dramatic conformational changes. These conformational changes allows the transmission of calcium signal. So, the moment calcium is bound with the protein that orientation change of protein structure will give rise to the signal for another things to happen inside the cell okay, or outside the cell. So, that is that is what we are we are going to going to discuss today. So, this is the closed structure of apochem that means minus calcium when it binds with calcium as we have seen it gets really really beautiful organized structure as you can see over here right. So, completely disorganized structure apochem becomes organized upon binding with calcium. If you zoom at this region carefully we find that there is indeed quite exciting way of binding of calcium. We have seen that also. So, this is the alpha helix, this is the loop and this is helix A f. So, helix E loop and helix f. So, helix E, helix f and the loop as if in on the right hand uh, this calcium is bound as is shown over here. So, this is called E f hand domain protein. This E f hand domain identified in the crystal structure first time for parabulmin and this helix loop, this helix loop helix structure um, is quite exciting for, for, a, for, for a, a number of reasons and that this calcium binding turn loop of uh, this gives rise to the turn loop of nearly 9 residue and this always often occurs or always almost always occur in pairs. Right. And if you zoom further, we, we can see that we have a calcium site that is where we were looking at more carefully and it is 7 coordinated as you may be able to see primary coordination sphere of calcium is having 7 coordination aspartate, main chain aspartate, aspartate, glutamate and water molecule is bound over there in this in this beautiful calcium binding mode of, of this of, of this calmodulin structure. Now, the there are many factors that we discussed that influence calcium 2 coordination to EF hand domain. One of the thing is cooperativity one, once one calcium binds another calcium binding occurs very quickly because it can orient the other structure or other site rather easily type of cooperativity what we have seen in hemoglobin cases it is similar to that where one of the binding one of the metal binding leads to the further uh, increase in the binding or the or the binding constant becomes very high and and the, and, and the binding affinity goes up so another in, in important factor that influence this calcium binding is the cellular magnesium okay now this this sort of uh, binding uh, is quite exciting for a number of reason because uh, this calcium binding has physical consequence. Once this calcium is binding with the protein, there is a signal that goes out, right? And these structural changes are also quite interesting, and therefore, calcium overall is acting as a second messenger. It is used, the calcium is used to transmit a signal in a cell. So, 
this is showing saying that let us say calcium concentration has gone up once it is binding with the with the protein. The, so, this signifies a number of things it may activate cellular components for example, enzyme some other enzyme can be activated and other cellular action may, may be triggered during this cascading signal process. Of course, most EF hand domain proteins are structured in the apostate binding of calcium from the apostate to binding of calcium as we were seeing. So, apo apostate to, to the binding of calcium results in a change of configuration as you can clearly see over here change of conformation is happening these are huge changes of conformation and th therefore, this message or the change of conformation allows the calcium binding protein to transmit the message of an increased calcium concentration or to transmit this signal CAM will then this CAM will then binds to various target protein after calcium coordination. So, essentially in the nutshell what is happening is there is a protein in the apostate it is uh, it is not too much um, doing anything at the moment. The moment calcium concentration goes up or calcium binds with it then it gets a particular organized structure this cal CAM or calcium bound CAM now the hollow CAM will be able to target different uh, proteins and they it will be able to bind with them. This overall binding will will gives rise to the many consequence in inside the cell. For example, um, well of course, it, ca it can activate a number of a number of uh, physiological function, we will see briefly some of its activity. For instance, um, before getting into that let me say that this flexible alpha helix region this allows CAM this overall as you can see 2 calcium over here another 2 calcium over there. This flexible flexible alpha helix allows hollow CAM to clamp down on target okay. and usually these targets are nearly uh, nearly 20 residue cationic and amphiphatic regions of protein and these, these short of these short of alpha helix accommodate different other protein as you can see over here it is this protein side chain it clamps down and this clamping will, will, will trigger a number of physiological consequences. For example, it can activate CAM kinase 2 let us see that. So, this is, there, is, uh, there is inactive form of the enzyme this is activation of CAM kinase 2 pathway by calcium. So, this is the calmodulin as you can see two of the calcium here two of the calcium here can bind as is shown by this yellow dots and upon binding to this uh, to this uh, calmodulin this calcium loaded calmodulin now is ready the organized structure upon calcium binding is ready to clamp down on, on this in inactive form of the CAM kinase. So, this is how it clamp down as you can see it clamping down on, on this inactive form of the, uh, of the CAM kinase 2 resulted in activation of this enzyme. Once it is activated this autophosphorylation takes place. So, ATP is converted to ADP this autophosphorylation leads to the fully activated form of CAM kinase. So, without this calcium binding or calcium bound calmodulin this was inactive form. Once calcium is bound it becomes active and therefore, this is now, now, now very, very, very activated and this is converting ATP to ADP it is now in fully fully bound state. So, calcium to signal recognized and transmitted by CAM and CAM binding changes the conformation of CAM to kinase and therefore, autophosphorylation is occurring. Well, and as you can see subsequently calcium can go out calmodulin can be released and again this cycle can go on. Of course, there is sometime the memory trace of prior calcium pulse also can lead to this overall CAM kinase 2 is present in the nervous system and concentrated at synapse 
and these are involved in learning and memory. So, you can see that calcium binding to calmodulin can have also effect in learning and memory of, of a given person, right. So, the proper concentration of calcium or maintaining proper concentration of calcium is absolutely critical. As you see, without those calcium, calmodulin will not be able to bind with chemokinase 2 and therefore, activation of chemokinase 2 will not happen. Upon calcium binding or suitable concentration of calcium um, binds with calmodulin that can clamp down further on the inactive form of, of the chemokinase 2. This overall activation will lead to the to, to the phosphorylation or autophosphorylation process where this chemokinase is fully active, such an active intermediate or active form of the enzyme will have direct impact in learning and memory and therefore, overall calcium can influence the learning process and, uh, and the memory process. Again, this is a chemokinase 2 is a very, very important uh, enzyme which is, which, which is uh, found in nervous system and it is concentrated at, at, at the synapses. So, so far this sort of calcium binding can also be incorporated in a number of, number of beautiful experiments. For instance, um, so these blue fluorescence protein and the green fluorescence protein, they are separated from each other and attached with calmodulin. Okay. So, these two units are separated from each other and attached with calmodulin. This is a research study which is sh showing clearly that uh, these calmodulin attached these proteins can, can be brought together while calcium is binding with it. So, this calmodulin is modified of course and two different proteins are attached with it. This calcium once it binds, it folds as you have seen how it folds, how it gives rise to the very organized structure. Overall that calcium binding and organization of the calmodulin gives rise to a situation where this calmodulin now organized and bringing these two fragment of the blue fluorescent protein and green fluorescent protein together resulting in this fluorescence resonance energy transfer threat. This is quite phenomenal. What essentially we are trying to say is the two proteins are separated or apart from each other. They are, they are linked by this calmodulin protein. Without calcium, they are separated. But when calcium binding occurs, this organization or reorganization of this calmodulin leads to a situation where these two protein which were far from each other, they comes very close to each other and then there is fluoresce, fluorescence resonance energy transfer occur which can be monitored spectroscopically. And this sort of behavior I think is quite, quite phenomenal, this sort of study to be able to do uh, and demonstrate that how calcium binding can change the geometry and the overall disposition of, of the different fragment of the protein or different protein is quite phenomenal. Okay. Let us get into a next topic, we will briefly discuss zinc finger domain, right. So, that, that is going to be the next topic that is going to be zinc zinc finger domains. Well, zinc finger domains in, in the uh, zinc finger is required for or zinc is required for specific DNA binding. Okay. Now, there are, there are protein that interacts with DNA in an extended manner, but during this interaction of protein with DNA, what is essentially found if zinc is there that can give rise to the organized structure of protein and therefore, protein will be able to interact with DNA. Now, there is a specific motif at which this zinc finger domains are, are, are binding. So, tandem sequence binds zinc 2 with cis 2 and 
and uh, his two motif. So, if you if you see in a protein backbone, um, you know at ev at from the end terminal, three fourth of of it exhibits nine tandem repeats, wherein two cysteine and two histidine are present. If you see this motif that is present, this two cysteine, two histidine motif, uh, which is repeated at the end terminal at the three fourth of 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 it which is, is a 9 tandem repeats and this is overall can bind zinc effectively 2 cysteine and 2 histidine. Each tandem sequence binds zinc with 2 cysteine 2 and histidine 2 motif. The motif is of course found in many other protein and zinc 2 binding with these 2 cysteine 2 histidine um, you know causes causes folding of the structure and that can bind then to DNA. So, essentially what we are trying to say is there is a protein which cannot interact with DNA effectively, but if that protein has a particular sequence as we have seen over here, this sequence will be able to bind with zinc effectively to give rise to the ordered structure, some sort of ordering as we have seen in the uh, in the calcium binding. So, calcium binding gives rise to an ordered structure from a disorder uh, protein backbone, right. So, this ordering or the structure orientation gives rise to a situation where, uh, where zinc will be bind in a completely organized fashion. This organized binding or organization of the protein upon zinc binding results in interaction of that protein with DNA, right. So, let us look at that. So, this is how it looks like as you can see these are cysteine 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 loop. This is bound with zinc histine histidine histidine loop overall it is also bound with zinc. This is a tetrahedral geometry we will come back to that and uh, this without zinc this is completely disoriented structure right this is the helical portion this is cis cis loop and this is the linker so this compound formation has been characterized by various spectroscopic uh, techniques for example this protein is taken and zinc is added and then the spectroscopic data are collected so in this zinc finger domain um, which is showing the zinc binding the exap study ex AAFs, X sub study zinc 2 for zinc 2 plus K edge study shows that this zinc sulfur uh, distance is 2.3 angstrom. Of course, crystal structure is not really initially known. This zinc 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 cysteine uh, zinc sulfur distance or zinc cysteine distance is 2.3 angstrom. This zinc nitrogen zinc histidine distance is 2 angstrom 2 angstrom and this is having a tetrahedral geometry. Of course, zinc 2 plus is D10 system, not many spectroscopic studies can be done. When zinc is replaced by cobalt 2 plus, which is having 3D7 electronic configuration, when zinc is replaced by cobalt 2 plus, it is also found that it is showing the tetrahedral geometry with cobalt 2 plus and it is coordinated with 2 cysteine and 2 histidine as shown in here. Of course, one can do also 2D NMR of the double stranded beta sheet and alpha helix and this is also corroborating with this with this fact that 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 this 2 cysteine and histidine is bound. Well, let us look at the crystal structure which obtained subsequently. This crystal structure clearly shows that 2 cysteine and 2 histidine is bound with zinc in the zinc finger domain protein. That gives rise to a very beautiful understanding that the zinc finger proteins are going to bind in an order fashion this 2 cysteine and 2 histidine motif once it is found it will it will bind with it. There are number of experimental studies has also been done which clearly suggest that no formation of alpha helix in, in, in this, this alpha helix formation occurs in the absence of zinc 2 plus. So, if the zinc 2 plus is not there, so this alpha helix formation will not be happening and therefore, it, it the overall protein cannot interact with DNA. Quite interestingly, this cysteine residue coordinates with zinc first. So, the cysteine coordination with zinc occurs first 
and then the histidine coordination occurs. Of course, the alpha helix formation occurs prior to the zinc histidine bond formation essentially telling that these two cysteine binding over here occurs with zinc first and, and then this alpha helix formation happens and then histidine comes close to the zinc and then it binds. This is quite enormous I think that is that sort of understanding how the ligation is happening with respect to the metal center is quite amazing. What we are trying to say is there is a protein backbone there is a 2 cysteine and 2 histidine motif the way we, we have discussed earlier this, uh, this sequence is conjured. Now once this 2 cysteine sees zinc it binds with it but of course the alpha helix uh, loop it, it has not been formed before that. After this cysteine binding to zinc then alpha helix structure forms that we are, we are seeing over here. Now upon alpha helix structure formation this histidine comes close to the zinc and then they bind. So this binding first then alpha helix formation and then this histidine is coming close to it. Okay. Overall the conclusion from many different experimentation and the molecular dynamics studies shows that the zinc coordination is required for folding of zinc finger to peptides. Right. Zinc coordination is absolutely required for perfect folding that would lead to the binding of these proteins with DNA. The peptide will be unfolded or adopt a completely different fold in the absence of zinc. All right. okay. So another question I think we would like to answer then why it is so specific for zinc and why it is having highest affinity for zinc this zinc finger domain why not something like cobalt 2 plus which can have a you know very very good tetrahedral I mean you know dissociates once it is bound they, it could have a very very good orientation with respect to with, with respect to these 2 cysteine 2 histidine why it is uh, show that zinc finger domain binds zinc specifically. So the query we are trying to answer is uh, zinc finger domains zinc finger domains display the highest affinity for zinc and why is that? Right. Well, of course, different metal ions such as zinc, cobalt, nickel, iron is in plus 2 or plus 3 oxidation state can bind with, with this 2 cysteine and 2 histidine motif. The KD value is quite high in fact for, for cobalt. But if you look at the LFAC ligand field stabilization energy we will be perhaps be able to answer it is. So consider ligand, a, a ligand field stabilization energy for cobalt 2 plus and let us say zinc 2 plus coordination. Right. So if you consider that you will immediately realize that cobalt 2 plus let us say cobalt hexa aqua complex. So of course no metal ions are free it has to be depro uh, it has to be it has to undergo dehydration to interact with the protein backbone. If you look at this, uh, this is in octahedral geometry, you will be able to see that it splits the d orbital and um, this is a d7 geometry, so 5 here, 6 here, 7 here. So overall if you calculate the ligand field stabilization energy, uh, it, it comes down to minus 4 by 5 delta 0 okay of course plus 2 p pairing energy for both of them right so um, if you, if you calculate it properly then this is of course going to be plus 3 by 5 delta 0 this is going to be minus 2 by 5 delta 0 overall it is minus 5 4 by 5 delta 0 if you are calculating it for the uh, for the tetrahedral cobalt species uh, dicobalt uh, cobalt dicysteine histidine species then uh, let us say let us draw the, the tetrahedral geometry you can have um, this 
the overall seven electrons are oriented in this fashion. Overall you can have minus 6 by 5, you can do the calculation yourself delta T and plus 2P, 2P is small, but this delta T value is, is very small compared to delta 0. Although this is minus 6 by 5 delta T and uh, this is minus 4 by 5 delta 0, there will be for cobalt there is a loss of 4.5 kcal per mole ligand field stabilization energy while going from octahedral to tetrahedral, right? From octahedral to tetrahedral, um, there is a loss of there is a loss of stabilization energy. For zinc 2 plus, there is actually there is no loss and that is because this is zinc 2 plus, this is D10 system from octahedral to tetrahedral, th there is no loss of loss of stabilization energy. Therefore, this can happen quite easily for zinc. So, what we have seen so far is zinc shows tremendous affinity to bind these two cysteine and two histidine and that is due to the fact that zinc is D10 in nature. Some other metal centers such as cobalt origin or originally they, these are hexa aqua cobalt complex 2 plus let us say they have high ligand field stabilization energy and they have tendency to stay in the octahedral state rather than in the tetrahedral state that is required for the zinc finger domain protein to histidine to, to, to cysteine to bind, right. Uh, that is why this is very specific for zinc and zinc is quite happy over there and uh, we have seen all over this. But quite interestingly, uh, we, we should also note that these sort of zinc binding, calcium binding are, are giving rise to a situation where the protein is getting structured and can interact with a target protein or DNA or even, even give some sort of signal for us, right? So, let us let us look at very quickly um, the metal mediated protein misfolding and diseases, right? Of course, as you as you can as you know, these sort of these sort of uh, things are quite exciting and uh, and quite 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 difficult to deal with because the understanding of these diseases are 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 not much known, right? And these are very difficult disease. If any 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 anyone have seen any Alzheimer disease patients and Parkinson disease patients, you would understand that life is very difficult and. Therefore, uh, worldwide there is a lot of studies um, that, is, that is going on to understand how to, how to uh, provide solution for, for, for treatment and, uh, and how, to, how to really better understand these diseases. What uh, human diseases actually leads, a uh, lot of human diseases are due to these uh, this uh, folding or rather misfolding of, of the monomers protein. As you have seen both the calcium and, and the zinc can bind with, with, uh, with the protein backbone in an organized fashion. But this sort of binding also mean that if they are not happening in an organized fashion, the, uh, the resultant can be, the resulting picture can be different disease states such as Alzheimer's disease as well as Parkinson disease. So, as you can see over here, this is a folded monomers and this is a unfolded monomers, right? These are in always in equilibrium and these are misfolded monomer. This misfolded monomer um, can then go to the misfolded dimer, then that can form febrils, amyloid and insoluble deposits. These processes can be catalyzed by different metal ions, right? As you have seen very, very uh, recently that these metal ions can bind with these protein in different orientation. There is protein backbone and protein side chain which can bind with these metal centers and gives rise to the misfolding, okay? Of course, they can also give rise to the desired folding but a lot of cases where misfolding is happening can, can, can gives rise to the many disease states including Alzheimer and Parkinson. These are really, really difficult disease to, uh, to cure at this point. Better understanding how to prevent these diseases uh, definitely has to do how better we understand and control the metal binding and, and the detailed understanding of the mechanism of this misfolding 
is, is going to be quite crucial in curing this disease. So, the role of metal ions in these processes of, of misfolding is oftentimes suggested and then uh, of course, these remain an, an active area of study, not much breakthrough so far has been done. Hopefully, in the years to come, we as a scientific group will be able to solve some of these problem uh, for, 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 for the future generations. With this, we will see you soon, keep studying, see you next. Time.